want to buy or sell a house? Do you want to make big money in real estate? Here's your chance. It's Flipping Houses for Rookies with Dealmaker Bill and Pete the Rookie. All right, here we are at another episode of Flipping Houses for Rookies. And I'm Bill the Dealmaker. And I'm Pete the Rookie. Plus. Uh, Plus. Oh, we have an in between now. Well, I'm I'm working towards. I'm not letting you forget. Oh, so this is this is the step right before the apprentice. Bill, how's my house look? Actually, I got to give you that one, Pete. <laughs> you are a plus. <laughs> <laughs> is this kind of like when I when I make reservations? Huh? It's it's one plus or two plus, <laughs> <laughs> or is this is this the part of uh, J C Penney's where I buy some of my clothes? The plus sizes. <laughs> no, this is what's between step one and step two. Oh. Step one and a half. So we have an invented it's, definition. Musically, this is one. This is rookie sharp. <laughs> For all you musicians, rookie sharp, not apprentice flat. Show me that rookie chord sharp. on the guitar, and we'll talk. I will make that chord. <laughs> I am I am licensed to create chords out of thin air. All right. So we are on episode thirty three, Peter. Boy, that's almost my age. <laughs> twice. <laughs> exactly twice. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Yes, I know I sound young, but I'm not. <laughs> Divide 33 by 2 or multiply it by 2. <clears throat> so uh, it's funny that you say that. Multiply it by 2 because what's the name of today's show? Um, the Math to Success. Oh, yeah, The Math to it's Success. It's funny that we did that. That wasn't even planned. <clears throat> no, we You just would think we had some sort of a writer that wrote that. Naturally huh? smart. That's all. <laughs> naturally smart or damn lucky. Oh, damn lucky. I think it's damn lucky. <clears throat> well, you want me to believe that you're naturally smart because that's why you keep coming up with the Rookie hey, Plus and the hey, Apprentice. And hey, I passed my IQ test. You did? I did. Yeah? Yes. So let me see your IQ test show up on the job and renovate it. Well, how's my house look? <laughs> see, my negotiating skills are getting better, Deal. Bill. <laughs> Deal maker. Uh, Bill has great one liners. I've been practicing. <laughs> You're on the defense now? I'm on the uh, just come back. Yeah, the comeback. Just, just, just throw it back at you. Oh, just so throw that's back the plus. At you. That's the plus. Just that's throw the back. plus. How could you handle Bill's little bombs? Because the, the, the guy says to you, well, I want 142000 for my house. And you yeah. come back, well, if I give you 142000 for your house, will I buy your house? Can I buy your house today? So I'm practicing. Just throw it back at you. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. We actually uh, do that uh, with our students on Saturdays, one Saturday a month, my uh, coaching clients. Mm -hmm. We actually drill. And I tell you, when we first started, in fact, last time we did it, uh, I was bitching to you in the car because we had trouble getting into the facility, right? And, oh, yeah. Uh, and uh, I was bitching to you in the car saying, you know, if these guys can't appreciate, blah, 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 <laughs> right? No, it wasn't, it wasn't that we just weren't there. We weren't the, they, they weren't there to let us in, and none of our students yeah, had shown up yet either. None of our students were there, right? It was like and two had canceled the, the night before. I can't yeah. come. I yeah. can't come. Like, well, what are we doing this so for? So I'm bitching to Peter in <laughs> confidence <laughs> in the car. I'm like, because he's a sounding board, right? So uh, Yeah, you can call it that. <laughs> yeah. Why, what would you call it? The bitch board. Well, the bitch board. <laughs> 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 okay. So uh, see that just flew off the top of my head. <laughs> I actually slept till like five fifty four this morning, so oh. I'm really awake. Oh, you're ready to That's go. That's good for me. You're ready to go. <laughs> yeah. So uh, anyway, so we were there, and, and and actually, believe it or not, once we got the day going, we kind of uh, it, and and I and I brought this up when we got into the into the masterminding because <clears throat> we had about what eight or eight or nine guys there, I think. Yep. And uh, out of the twelve that usually come. Um, but I, I, I told them that, you know, uh, this is interesting because the morning didn't go as we planned, right? And, and, and I kind of got a little off the rails a little bit, which is unusual for me. But it's just, you know, I, I had been away for a week and, you know, I was just a little flustered. And uh, the truth of the matter is, is that's how this business is, is it never goes right. You, you can't plan on this is what's going to happen and it happens, and that's probably the biggest complaint that I hear in this business is is that things don't go right. And it's and it's not that things don't go right that you have to worry about. It's how you respond. Well, it doesn't go as you thought in your head. Right. But think of hunting. Right. How does this relate, Peter? <laughs> I said right. I hope you. I hope you were going to keep talking, and then you stopped talking. <laughs> I, said, I was. I gave well, you no, a half a gig, a half of no, acknowledgement it, to keep you, you talking. That was there. supposed. To, you should have gone like right. 
All right. It should have been more. Yeah, like that. Okay. Well, I was, just, I was thinking, you go hunting. Not that I've done that, but I have friends that'll do that. You go hunting, and you know, you don't know where anything's going to be. You just got to wait and see where things are going to wind up and where you're going to get your food from and stuff. It's like a garden too. You plant stuff. One thing grows. The other thing doesn't grow. You manage. Okay. Whatever comes up comes up. So we should hi- we should hire more hunters to be real estate guys. All right. Good they analogy. Must be, Pete. They must be paint. They must be patient. Pass on your wit today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go back to sleep now. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's, so it's, it's true, though. You it just, is. It is true. But well, you have to be willing. It's I, life. You just I have to go with it. I was in my house in Middletown yesterday, and I thought I was being clever because uh, I have a bathroom that's a master bathroom. You, you, the, ho- the house is big. It's a thirty-six or 3,800-square-foot house. Well, it's big for this area. Uh, if you're listening in Texas or someplace like that, we got guys, uh, which, by the way, a big shout-out to the guys in Australia. <laughs> uh, I talked to them a couple weeks ago, Marco and his buddies out there, and he tells me that they got uh, houses out there that, that we buy for 150000 200000 They pay $1.2 million for them in Sydney. Wow. That's what he told me. It's crazy. Oh, geez. It's crazy. But uh, you know there there are sections that you know there are sections of the country that have you know the twenty five hundred square foot house is small, yeah you know so I'm not talking about those but I have thirty six thirty eight hundred square feet and I'm building a bathroom you know there's a big there's a big bedroom uh, there's a big room oh like a great room over the garage uh, that that I've turned it into a master bedroom and then I actually have the master bedroom which was what do you say that room is like twelve by twelve by ten or. 12 by 12 or something 12, like that. 14, 12, 14. Not, much, 14, not more yeah. than that. It, wasn't a, it was not a huge room. Right. And we turned that into the sitting room <laughs> yeah. for the ba- for the bedroom. Yeah, and the, then the, the bedroom is the probably. The pre-bedroom. The bedroom is probably, what, I don't know, 30 feet long, 25 feet long. Yeah. Probably 20 feet wide. Yeah. Big, you know, um, Cathedral roof. Cathedral ceilings. Yeah. yeah. Roof, yeah. roof, roof. So uh, we turned the bedroom in there. So anyway, so I put a master bedroom, um, a master bathroom. There's a master bathroom in there, and I wanted to put a his and her sink in there. Yeah. Right? So I have the – so here I am buying all the materials because uh, we, we do that now, uh, which we, we're we going to talk about that today. Remind me to tell that story about how I buy materials, okay? Yeah. That's a great – that's 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 one of my thoughts. Right. How do you control this stuff and who buys what? So um, in any event, um, what happens is, is – uh, you want paper? Yep, I got one. We're fumbling around here. I told Peter to take notes. Now he needs paper. So I got an old uh, envelope here. <coughs> from an old so envelope. We, we got a Christmas card last night. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Merry Christmas. Very nice. Yeah. A little belated, but we got it. So anyways, uh, what happened is, uh, so I'm, in, I'm buying the material, right? And... Um, I want a his and her sink. So I'm looking I'm looking at vanities and they're like twelve hundred, fifteen hundred for vanities. I'm like, hmm. what the hell? I'm at Home Depot. Right. Yep. And uh I'm like, oh man. So anyways I get this this brilliant idea that I'm gonna buy two sinks that were really nice by the way. They're they're mahogany wood with like uh like uh, granite tops. Okay. Right, two separate sinks. Right. And then I'm gonna put a uh, so the sinks are twenty four inch sinks. The countertops are 24 inch, mm-hmm. and then in the middle, I'm going to put a 14 inch piece of furniture that's like drawers that is like uh, 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 that's got Corian. I mean uh, the the granite top, mm-hmm. but it's like three or four inches lower than the sinks, oh. so it's like a place to like put things and put little towels and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. It looks awesome. Hmm. It looks like and it matches. Display, it, it all matches. matches, and then and then the vanity. Uh, I mean, so that's the vanity, and then the medicine cabinet matches the wood, so it's all this this hmm. beautiful dark mahogany, right? Now that sounds like it might cost more because you got three separate pieces. Like it you think it. you get a discount for yeah. getting a. So what would it come to? Well, it was like five or six hundred bucks for everything. Yeah, great. That's crazy. Until I got in the house, so now I'm oh. in the house <laughs> yesterday and I'm walking around. Oh, here's the yellow. And they're trying to install the sink. Hmm. Well, guess what? I didn't think of. The plumbing. The plumbing is right in the middle of the wall where the where the sinks are not. Of course, because it would have been, would have been in the middle. Didn't even think of that. Oh man, didn't even think of that. So, so my point here is is that that I'm the ass, first of all, because I didn't think of that. But you would think after doing as many renovations as I did or have done, I would think of stuff like that. But you just well, if you thought just happens. if you thought of it in the house. But you wouldn't have till you get to the store to say, well, that's too much. What else can I do? And you're in the store. Right. The only thing I could think of doing, what, did you think of a solution? Because I just thought of one. You first. Oh, I have a solution. Oh, no. I, and that's what my point is. Yeah, is so it's we, not, not, that, not that the mistake happened. It's how I handled it. Right. 
So what I said to the what I said to the the, the contractor is well, first of all, there's tile the whole the whole bathroom's tile, except they tiled around the original vanity, so there's no tile where where the vanity is going. Okay. Okay, behind it. So uh, it's just uh, and the rock. wall underneath. Yeah, it's yeah, just you, yeah. There's no reason to have tile there. Right. So I told him, I said, why don't you just cut open the wall and just replumb it? Yeah. You know, like so. So put a Y in there for the drain, yep. and then just use they use PEX now. Which yeah, it's all is, plastic, which is plastic piping. So he could just you know put a T on top of the the hot water pipe, you know, mm-hmm. which is copper, mm-hmm. and put a T on top of the cold water pipe, and then just run a piece of PEX to each sink. Yeah. So that's what he's doing. Uh, but you know, it was a half an hour of like, oh shit, what mm-hmm. did I do? Oh my <laughs> god! And I'm thinking they opened the boxes, and how am I going to return the vanities? And now I got to buy this fifteen hundred dollar vanity, and I'm yeah. like, no, 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 Bill, just calm mm-hmm. down, just calm down. So I just, what did I do, Pete? You just let lit it up sink. The cigar, <laughs> sat on the tub, and just smoked my cigar. And the contractor's looking at it, and we just start talking. You know, just having a conversation. Well, what about this and what about that? And then next thing you know, boop, an answer just popped up, mm-hmm. and we were good. Well, that was my first thought. Too bad I wasn't there. <laughs> <laughs> just put, it, just go, you go left, right. What else can you do? You got to go left, right. right. But anyways, my, I have a thought though because how do you uh, avoid the unforeseeable? Well, say you want to buy, say you want to do that. Next time you go, take a picture of the thing. Open everything up as you can. Just take a picture so when you're there, you can look at it and right. compare. Now, that may work. That may not work. And you'd have to have some forethought. Okay, I'm going to do something in the kitchen. Chick, chick, three, four pictures. Then you go. and you can With phones, you can always look at it just in case. Like, wait a minute. Where does that go? And it won't solve everything, but at least you have a picture. Right. Uh, that's good on Monday morning quarterbacking. That's Except right. You have to realize this is for the next time, not <laughs> for the last time. Well, you have to realize that when I was sitting with, this, with, the, with the girl – uh, let's talk about that first, okay? Because the name of the show is M- The Math to Your Success. The Math. The Math. Uh, it's a play on the map. Yeah. Right? So, like, normally you have a road map to your success. Yeah. So this is a play on the math to your success. Because, honestly, uh, I've only made money where my math is good. Yeah, well, that makes sense. Right? So math doesn't lie. So we sit down and do a presentation with somebody in a house. It's the math that convinces them. It's not what I say. When they sit there and they do the math themselves, yeah, you know, you just guide them with, well, what about this? What about the conveyance tax? And what about the negotiating fee? What about the, uh, the the discount? What about the taxes? What about this? And you just ask those questions. Nobody's done that for them before. Nobody's asked those questions. No, that's right. So when they have to answer those questions and they start writing down the numbers and they realize mm-hmm. what the math really is, to their net check, it's amazing. I'd say light bulbs go off, but it's not com- completely happy light bulbs at first, but it's the real light bulbs. It's the truth. Yeah, well, definitely their their universes change. Boom. You know, there's a switch in, in, in reality, uh-huh. for sure. But they know it's the truth, so right. would you rather know the truth now or six months from now? When, it's, when you already went through a deal and done a lot of negotiating and worked on a deal for six months or three months or two months or whatever... And then you get to the very end, and you get the the purchase and sales. I mean, not the purchase and sales, the uh, settlement statement or the HUD HUD one. A lot of people call it. Yeah. And you realize the check is, you know, you think your check is going to be thirty grand, and it's ten. Mm-hmm. And then you're like, what happened? And now now it's too late. So we educate them before that happens. Yeah. Anyways, we'll talk about that in a little while if you want. Uh, right now, what I'm talking about is being at Home Depot. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, here's here's what we did. Should I should I should I I use I just usually talk about this stuff in my coaching group. I don't usually talk about this on the radio, but I open my mouth and now I have to insert my foot, so I got to let it out, right? So what I did is so in your particular case, here I have this job, right? It's it's a uh, it's a fifty thousand dollar renovation, uh, but there's pieces and parts to it, uh, like the painting because it's such a big house. I mean, the painting was like nine grand. Right, uh, and then there's you know of course there's I, th- I was expecting 500 for dumpsters now there's a thousand because we need two dumpsters and I had to put a driveway in and I had to do some landscaping and that was like seven grand eight grand mm-hmm. uh, you know so the money goes quick you don't realize it so anywhere I can save I'm going to save right I don't care if it's 50 bucks if I can save I can save 
So one of the things that I have been doing, uh, you and I talk about this a lot lately, is uh, the contractor we hire, he does labor, we buy the materials. Right, that we control. Was that most, is that what I was supposed to write down? <laughs> I don't remember what you were supposed to write down. <laughs> Me neither. I didn't write it. I lost yeah. it. Yeah, but we're, you're picking the materials because uh, how do you know what he's going to buy? If it's right. going to be good or just you know something cheap to get his price down, he buys you cheap stuff. So I don't want to do that. Yeah, so I got spoiled because about thirty for about 30 renovations, I had the same guy do it, and he was well-trained. Uh, he knew what I wanted. We had uh, gone through everything, and I didn't. All I needed to do was tell him, I want to do this, I want to do that, I want to do this. And then he did it. He, he knew what, what kind of cabinets you liked and what kind of colors, floors, the quality level. Vanities and, yeah. Not the, the cheap stuff, the decent right. stuff, the good stuff. He knew when to be cheap and when not to be cheap. But uh, he, he got rich and famous. Uh, I had a couple of years where I wasn't doing as much as I'm doing now and as much as I was doing before. You know, back in 2010, 11, and 12, it was kind of rough. I was only doing two or three houses a year. So, uh, it, so anyways, he, he had a partner when he first when I first met him. He had a partner, and they split up, and he needed work, so I kind of made him because yep. I gave him work and got him going, right? Didn't know I was doing that when I was doing it, but I did. And then uh, he kept growing and growing and growing. And then uh, it got to a point where he went back with the partner. So now he had this big business that he had made plus his partner, and I'm just like, you know, it happens. It's contractors. Mm -hmm. One thing I could tell you about contractors, time changes everything. <coughs> Every week something changes for them. You know, it could be like the contractor I'm talking to now, it's like I need you to be here tomorrow morning because the the appliances are coming. So i got thousands of dollars with appliance coming. I need to make sure somebody's here. Oh. I don't know. He said, uh, "I got to take my dog to the vet." Hmm. You know what I mean? It's just, it's hmm. just what happens. Hmm. You know, and I'm not invalidating him that he's got to take his dog to the vet, but you know, he's supposed to be on the job and he's not. And mm -hmm. Or he could have said to me, "My guy's here. What do you need?" And it's, it's just contractors, you know. Um, and it would be nice if they if they had a problem, they solved it. Yeah, I sent my second guy, you know, something. Yeah, that's one of, thing. That's know, one thing that I do. That's a value. Uh, uh, a side note here, Peter. Uh, how do you gauge? Who should work for you and who shouldn't work for you, whether it's an employee or a contractor or anything like that, mm -hmm. and that's a major factor for me. What you just said is is do they do they when they come to me with a problem, do they also have solutions, yeah. or do they just come to me with a problem and make it a stop? Yeah, right. So if I have a stop machine that's always trying to stop everything, he's the wrong guy. Totally. Now you may come to me with a problem, which you do all the time. And not not because you, of you, but just because you're learning. Mm -hmm. right? So you come to me with a problem, but you always have you know a solution or two or three that you're trying to work on in your head. Now they may not even be in the right ballpark, the solutions, but at least you're coming to me with some ideas. Yeah. So a good gauge of who should work for you and who shouldn't work for you uh, has to do with a lot of that. You know, when they come to you with problems, do they have solutions? Are they willing to work it out? So that's why I haven't been fired yet. <laughs> Maybe that's the reason why you're not the apprentice yet either. Damn! Oh, Boom! Ding. Wait a minute, I'm keeping score. One for Bill. <laughs> uh, no, no, but that's, that's how I was trained. Totally not the reason. I'm just being a. That's a carping comment. Sorry about that. But that's so. how I was trained. You know, if you have if you have a problem, well, why don't you figure a solution? Right. So let's why go back. dump it on the other guy. Let's go back to Home Depot because this is what I was. I told you to write down that I wanted to cover. So, but you don't have to write it down because we're going to cover it right now. Yeah, it was like buying your own stuff. Yeah, so so here's what happened. So uh, I walked through the house with the contractor. Now, you have to realize this is not for everybody. You have to realize I've been doing this a long time. Uh, I, I have construction experience. Once upon a time, I was an electrician. You know, uh, so I have, I'm not a know-it-all. I have a lot to learn. Uh, but I definitely have a feel for the industry, Okay. I'm not so sure someone like you, because you don't have a lot of that experience, can do this. Mm -hmm. uh, so you got to be careful on what you do here. you got to make your own decision on whether you can do what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. uh, but there are ways around it. So I, I get with the contractor, and we go in each room, and we talk about we have a scope of work now. I have a scope of work, which is just uh, line by line. I use an Excel spreadsheet. And I do a scope of work, and what I do is I, I write all the th I go in each room and I and I write down what needs to be done in that room, and then I assign that work to a contractor, and then that that's the scope of work. And so, some of that would be for, the, uh, for electricians, some would be for the painter. It splits up. Right. Yeah. So whoever does this, know, one the kitchen guy, or the painter, or <clears> the, <throat> and then the general stuff is the contractor. 
Right. Right. So this is the contractor. So I walk through with the contractor, and this is what we're going to do in the room. In the room. Okay. What do we need for materials? And I make a take a yellow pad and I just make a material list. Do you even do like lumber and yep. the sheetrock? Every detail. Nails. Huh? Molding, glue. Yeah, because I'm whatever. familiar with the appliances, the paint, that kind of stuff. But the, the, obviously, if there's any carpentry, there's right. more sheetrock. The things. only the only one I don't do that for is the electrician. Mm-hmm. Because they they they're different. The electricians will do all that for you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, sometimes the plumber depends on how much plumbing I have, but a lot of times my contractor will do the plumbing. Yeah. Okay. So now I have a complete material list because <clears throat> okay, I go through the room. I, I spend an hour, hour and a half, maybe two hours with the contractor. We make an entire list. Okay. So the first thing you think of is how could you think of everything? Well, you can't. I'm yeah. going to tell you how to handle that. Okay. Mm-hmm. I take that list, and you could do this with Lowe's, but I have much better a success with Home Depot because Home Depot is more geared towards contractors. Hmm. Lowe's is more geared towards the retail buyer. All right? right. So if you're looking for something nice like light fixtures and stuff, you might be better off to go to Lowe's because they're more, they're a step fancier. They're more, they more tend to the the end user. Right. Where the contractors, uh, you know, when you tend to the contractors, you're just looking to get the functional things up, and they're not always the prettiest things. They're right. just run-of-the-mill stuff, yeah. right? So I go to the pro desk, okay? And I take the list to the pro desk, and I give the girl the list. And I tell her, I'll come back. Okay, so I give her the list. I go over with her, make sure she can understand my writing, all that kind of stuff. And, and any questions she might have, right? Uh, sometimes sh- I'll sit right down with her and we'll pull up a computer screen and she'll start showing me, is this what you mean? Is that what you mean? You know, that kind of stuff. And this is just the raw kind of ingredients, not, not appliances or light fixtures? I do it with everything. Okay. Now, but this list that I'm doing right now is just for the contractor. It's the material list for the contractor. Yeah. yeah. So I tend to do one. <clears throat> I tend to do this with the contractor. Then I do appliances separate, and mm-hmm. then I do light fixtures separate. Mm-hmm. So I do this three different times. Yeah. Okay. Because I take take each scope of work separate, so that I can so it's not too overwhelming in my mind. Oh sure. Okay. So right now I got the contractors' materials. Okay, that all makes the, sense. So the, I've been I've seen you do some of these. I saw you do the appliances, and I, I did lights in the on the last house. Right. That's fun for an hour and a half picking sixteen fixtures. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's interesting. Uh, so what I do is, uh, and you know me well, I mean, uh, I work I work 12, 15 hours a day, but I don't work. I get everybody else to do the work. So I get the girl at the pro desk. I have her. She follows me around because they get credit for my sales, mm-hmm. right? So she follows me around. I'll take one of these, three of those. She writes the SKU numbers down, right? Uh, and then she, I, she takes my list and she compiles it all together. And then I come back the next day. And she's got a whole list for me, what everything costs, and any questions she has. Yep. So now I compile the list, and I got the actual cost of my materials. Okay. And this particular house, I think it was 3700 or something, 3500 3800 something like that. Okay. Now what we do is because the order is over $1,500, okay, uh, most people don't know this, and uh, hopefully Home Depot doesn't come after me for this podcast um but if you uh if you have an order over 1500 and you're using the pro desk they can take the order and send it to the bid room there's a bid room and it's in atlanta georgia it's actually a computer and they send the con- they send the order through the bid room and if there's any markdowns or contract i mean any discounts they can give the contractor then you get them so she takes my order and runs it into the bid room, and I eliminate three hundred and sixty nine dollars. Nice, just for running it to the bid room. Ten percent, uh, something like that. Yeah. Nice. Then what happens is, is because I use the bid room, sometimes I get an additional five percent, which is uh, about a, well, usually an additional five percent, but I don't always get that. She minimally gives me fifty bucks for using the bid room. Oh. So I got three hundred sixty nine dollars plus fifty bucks. <laughs> okay. Then what I do is, uh, and, and I and I don't even know why I'm doing this because I shouldn't be I shouldn't be doing this. But I, honestly, I started out. It's the math. 
okay? Because this this is something that I usually only teach my coaching clients, okay? So there's a website called raise.com. R-A-I-S-E? Yeah, like raise, raise like raise. your hand, okay? <clears throat> what happens is, is uh, what most people don't realize is, is that um, when people buy gift cards, right, they don't always use the gift cards. Okay. Yeah. So um, they turn them in, don't they? They sell them back. They sell them back. Yeah. I heard it's about twenty. You get you get eighty percent of the value back. Right. So if you have a hundred dollar gift card, you still have a hundred dollars left on the gift card. Mm-hmm. Right. You're going to get eighty bucks. Right. So I think okay. Raise dot com buys them. Okay. Yeah. Somebody buys them, but they end up on raise.com. And there's a little, mar- uh, it says 20% equity there. Right. So now what they'll do is they'll give whoever buys the card off of raise.com, they'll give them a 3 4 5 8% discount. So they make a little money. Right. The person gets his money back, and the right. person buying it gets a little discount. Right. That's how we do real estate, isn't it? Exactly. Everybody wins on each end. You say, how can that be? Well, exactly. throw the card away. Right. You know, get 80% of it. They're good instead right. of nothing. Right. Don't need it. Use it. Right. Money. Nice. So I go on to raise.com, and I actually buy in-store vouchers. Now, in this particular case, I saved, I think, 5.2%. So you're, in a sense, buying the cards, like the the, the, uh, the part that they swipe, the code or something like that? Yeah. So it's not a gift card. It's an in-store voucher. Mm-hmm. Now, this only works if you're buying, if they have the material in-store. If you buy it online, it doesn't work. Oh. Okay, so you go there, and the girl is pulling stock out of the store, hmm. or the guy. I use a girl. Mm-hmm. Okay, so now at the end of the day, I saved fifteen point one one percent on my order on my thirty six or thirty seven hundred dollar order. So I saved six hundred bucks, and that's money just back in your pocket. And I didn't have to do anything for it. I'm just being clever <clears throat> because. Raise.com actually it actually works better on the cell phone on a smartphone than it works on the internet. Believe it or not. Now why is that? I don't know. They're just a mobile. They're they're a mobile app. I think they started as a mobile app. Hmm. I don't know. Well, I know that if you do a lot of ordering on your phone, as a com- compared to your desktop, you'll get better offers on your phone where you place the original orders. Right. Wherever you place the orders more, there's a lot of feedback. There's a lot of uh, watching. Yeah. That's interesting. So, uh, anyways, I'll go into Home Depot now, and I'll just I'll buy like like the other day I went in and bought light fixtures, and it was like fifteen hundred bucks or something like that. Why well, I I didn't know how much it was going to be, so I go onto my Raise app, and it's hooked up to my debit card, which is right to my checkbook, or I use my PayPal account because I have it hooked up both ways. Mm-hmm. And I just go in there and just I just buy various vouchers. And I think the other day I saved it was like forty eight bucks or something like that. Yeah, on a fifteen hundred just by just by paying because once it's once it goes into my wallet on raise, I stand there with my phone and the girl scans the barcode like you're talking about, types in the number and it's paid for. Just she like scans it check. off your phone. Off it shows phone. on your phone. Sure. Or you can print it. You can print it out too <clears throat> if you don't have a smartphone. You can print mm-hmm. it out and bring the voucher in on the printed. Mm-hmm. Right. Well. And and I saved forty eight dollars. Now, you may think $48 is not a lot of money. Well, do that a few times. More importantly, what mm-hmm. did I do to get the 48 bucks? I mean, if you walked down the street and found $48 on the street, would you just bend over and pick it up? How long would you have to work at your job to make $48? That too. But would you bend over and pick up $48? Uh, sure. I sh- I, anything over a dime. Right. So <laughs> where did that come from? I'm you not a penny pinch. No. Oh, I pick up every penny. Oh, geez, Bill. You know why? Are you hoping to find a, 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 a clover leaf? No, there's penny? no there's no reason not to, other than laziness. <laughs> well, I just don't like pennies. Oh, okay. I don't like them. I give them away. Mm. Well, that's okay. You can keep give it away. I didn't say you had to keep it, but <laughs> don't, don't let it just lay on the ground. Well, I hate to be at the uh, you know ch- cash and out, and she says it's 51 cents. Damn, I... I had a penny yesterday. <laughs> hey, I should have picked that uh, penny up yesterday. Hey, yesterday all I had in my pocket for change was that penny. I got 50 <laughs> cents back, not 99 cents. <laughs> <laughs> all right. 
Anyway, but so the upside when I get too much change in my pocket to change the subject, I put it in my vacation uh, nice. jar. Okay, nice. so it's okay. Nice. Yeah, but you say forty eight dollars, and and all and, I and did, then so, si- and then six hundred. So, so what's the and then difference? what else? But what's the difference if I write a check or if I use the if I do what I did? It took me an extra two minutes to upload the money from my checkbook into the, my account into my wallet you just have to learn how to do it and then it becomes routine it's and, and the girl is standing there and she knows she's like okay uh it's fifteen thirty four, whatever i'm like okay she said uh so let me know when you're ready because she knows i'm going to go to my phone and upload it to raise and and i'm going to pay for it on the vouchers she yeah. tells every, all the contractors because she tells everybody she's like how did you figure this out i don't know a friend of mine told me about it hmm. you know and it's just and it's just cool. Yeah, my kid. I talked to my kid about it. He goes, "Yeah, you can get uh, a lot of stores. I mean, any store. Oh yeah, there's you know, Walmart, people, Stop, we Cole, up Sears, north, north, you know? northeast. We have Stop and Shop, even which is a grocery store chain. Yeah, uh, they have a whole display. One percent. You get one percent. So you think one percent's not a big deal, but you save one percent on all your groceries for the year. It's something. Yeah. Right. If you had to give away one more percent, you'd be bitching. Right. Right. That's right. Oh, and they went up one percent on the on the on the yeah. subway token fees. Yeah. Well, gasoline. Look at gasoline. It goes up one percent. How much is one percent on gasoline? Uh, ten cents. Yeah. No. Uh, uh, thirty cents. No, three cents. One percent. Yeah. Yeah, about three cents. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. So. Um, That'd be three pennies, right? That would be three pennies on the ground, not picked up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good. So so that's just one of the ways that math is your success, right? So anyways, going back to the original how we got off in this banter. Well, it's math. Yeah. That's that's but great when, math. But when when you're talking about me uh taking pictures mm-hmm. of the underneath the medicine cabinet, you realize it's been an hour and a half or 2 hours or an hour or whatever with this and we're doing the entire house so i didn't think there was going to be a problem with the vanities right but to your point in your credit i should say you've had me taking pictures of my newington house right it, it, tw- once twice a week and there's globs of pictures i didn't go under sinks and stuff but right. i took a picture the other the other day a few weeks back when uh, i didn't like how some of the plumbing was done right <laughs> yeah and i took a picture of that to show you look at this damn thing right look how the uh, this thing doesn't meet the elbow <laughs> Right, but so yeah, pictures are great because you have a you have a record and we and have them on your phone. Yeah, and the other day, I was trying to f- f- buy something and say, "Oh wait, a minute, I got a picture of the house." I had to look at the front door. I was doing something to buy the front door, and I did right. that. I, I I got as close. I scrolled it all. I expanded. I looked okay, and I had a better idea what to do because I could see it. Completely different uh, example, but the other day, uh, my my printer wasn't uh, the. My, I sent my daughter, who's my assistant, to go buy me ink uh, ink for my printer. Mm-hmm. And you come back, and she puts the cartridge in, and, and it doesn't work. Hmm. So I'm like, bah, 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 bah. so I do it, and it doesn't work. So she does it. It doesn't work, right? So finally, she's like, well, the anchor, the anchor, there's something wrong with the cartridge. I said, okay. So I noticed. Now, she's a millennial, okay? So I noticed <laughs> she's, she puts the ink cartridge back in and gets the error on the screen of the printer, takes her phone, and takes a picture of the error message. Mm-hmm. So that when she gets to the store... Yeah. She can show the person that this is the error message I'm getting. That's right. I wouldn't have done that. Mm-hmm. You know, I wouldn't have even thought of that. Now, I take a lot of pictures. You know I'm pretty savvy with that kind of stuff. Sure. But I wouldn't have done that. I wouldn't have gone that far. So uh, it's important. Now, let's go back to the contractor. Yeah, I've, seen you, I've seen you take a picture of a window casement yep. and send it to your contractor on the phone. Say, see that? What do you got to buy for that? And you're showing him on your right. phone because he's, he's uh, 30 miles away. Right. Yeah. And. So you've and, done it, and not yeah, not only that, but one time the, the the same contractor who's who's fifty miles away, forty or fifty miles away, said, "I need to measure the windows. Can you do it for me?" So yeah. now that's a touchy subject because if I measure the windows wrong, he <coughs> says, "Well, you measured them, and then I got to buy." You measure windows. from the inside of the window or the outside of the so casement. What, the what did we do in Eldridge Street? What did we do? Uh, I th- you we shot took, it. You did. You we uh, took a tape measure and we took pictures of what we were measuring. We showed him the tape measure on where it was, yeah. and sure enough, it was wrong. Right, yeah. and he's like, "No, no, measure it from here." And then we took. I had you and I were there. You helped help me with the tape. Yeah. And we took pictures, and we ended up taking the right measurements because he actually saw that. You could do a video too, but you know, it's it's a lot easier to deal with that. Yeah, you could be skyping and all kinds of stuff. Right. So now, technology can help. Now go back to what you were talking about with the house in Newington about taking pictures a few times a week. Mm-hmm. So we start, and I'm not doing that in the house in Middleton. I'm not. I haven't been that good with it. Um, 
But what happens is, is for me, what happens with me is if I have somebody else running my jobs, like you were running that job, uh, I have you take pictures so I can look at them. But that's not the only reason why I take pictures because if you have multiple contractors in the house, they will tend to blame the other contractors for things that they screwed up, right? So uh, if you have pictures, like for example, let me give you a, a good example. You know, you got the floor guy in there doing the floors and you got a painter in there painting. Yep. Right? So who who did what when, right? When yeah. When the floor guy bitches, the painter did it. And when the painter bitches, the floor guy did it. Yeah. Right? But if you go into a house and you do and you take pictures, you know, three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, or whatever, and you and you have a chronological change of the house, when that arises, you go back to the pictures and you say to the contractors, "Well, I have a picture here and I have a picture here, so this isn't correct or this is correct," and it keeps your contractors in check. Yeah, because he wasn't there Tuesday. Right. The other guy was. The other guy. Yeah, so he, it just keeps them uh, on their toes. Right. Right. All right, good. So that's one way that math is your success, <laughs> is to be clever with your renovations and be clever. So what about if you're not doing renovations? So let's talk about the real math. Mm, okay. Okay. Uh, probably the best example, we're about 35 minutes in, so we'll probably, we won't be able to cover as many examples as I'd like to. Uh, however, if you go to flippinghouses.club, that's flippinghouses.club, uh, there are 10 videos there that you can get for free, and they explain all the math that I'm going to talk about right now. This is deal structuring. Oh, yeah. Okay. So go there and do that. Um, <clears throat> Also, we have some new things that have happened, uh, which we'll announce at the end of the show. But we can, you could reach us by email now. I don't know why we haven't been talking about email. We have a couple email addresses. Emma actually gave us a new email address oh for the show. Oh, boy. Uh, and then um, you can go get these podcasts, where to get them downloaded. And uh, I've had a couple people uh, reach out and say that they wanted to get more materials. And we have been hiding our materials intentionally because I haven't released any of it. Uh, so you can go get that stuff now and at least look at it. So if you have, if you want to get more information from us, there's a couple pages. So uh, <coughs> before we uh, go today, I'm going to give you those websites. So if you're driving or doing whatever you're doing, uh, grab a paper and pencil because uh, in a few minutes we're going to give you all that information. Pull over the rest stop. Yeah, pull over. Take a leak. Go get a coffee. Right. <clears throat> okay. So probably the best math that I could talk about is something that I did not invent and something that I did not even uh, know how genius it was until I think it was Einstein on his deathbed. Hmm. They oh. asked him what was the best invention to <clears throat> mankind. Yeah, I've heard this one. What do you say? Um, simple interest. C- simple was a com- com- compound compounded interest. Compound interest. Compounded interest. Right. So compound interest is the is the most. He thought it was the best invention to mankind, right? Yeah. So with that said, uh, probably the best deal that I can structure is a is an owner finance deal. Oh, yeah. So now like last uh, the other night we were at a, uh, at a meetup, and one of the examples, because when, we, when people come to our meetups, which, by the way, are at 128 Center Street in Wallingford, Right. Come on down. Yeah, come on down. So a big, fat hooray to Larry. Yeah. Hey, Larry. <laughs> Larry, Larry, you amazing man, you. From? He drove all the way from Tennessee to Wallingford, Connecticut for our meetup. No, he must have come to see family or something for he Christmas. Did not. He came to see the lights at he Constitution. He not. He just came to. Yeah, I know. He I asked did him. not. He, he just he came. He drove, got in his car, got permission from his wife. And drove from Tennessee all the way to Wallingford, Connecticut to sit in our... That has got to be the most respectful thing that anybody's ever done for me. That was so awesome. It was absolutely amazing. I would floor it. It took me minutes to recoup myself. And not (laughs) many people take the wind out of my lips. And he did. He definitely did. That was amazing. So it's 128 Center Street in Wallingford. We meet on the third Wednesday of the month uh, at 7 p.m., and we uh, do a we so in the meetup we actually the, what I've been doing lately is is people just bring deals, yeah they'll bring their personal deals and I'll structure offers for them right on the board. 
Yeah, you've done your deals many, many, many times, yeah. and their deals are the same thing, but it's more helpful to them to show you how to do their deals. Well, it's closer to home for them. Well, it's going to help them. Yeah. They're, 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 they're scratching their heads. Can I, can't I, what, I, what do I, should I, I, I? yeah. Right. And the most amazing thing <clears> is, <throat> is that they don't, uh, you know, because we haven't been very good with our website, uh, which I've, I've fixed and am fixing it, and I didn't want to, to be honest with you. I didn't want to be quote unquote in the information business mm-hmm. but we're going that way because I got too many requests and you know like we talked about the prospect suspect form uh, and people ask me where do you get it so they email me and I send it to them mm-hmm. for free right um, well in your in all honesty you started this uh, like the meetups a year ago yeah. and you didn't know where you're going with it I yeah. saw it evolve and people said um, can you do like a workshop or something because right. you know, I could feel it myself Bill can we just sit down for a few hours and really go over this in, in details not just two hours spend the day and people ask you know, and one guy almost cried yeah. I don't know if you remember that yep. and he says you know we appreciate what you're saying but we don't quite know how to do this and workshops started and the podcast and the yeah. radio show because people need the rest of the story you can't just you can't just tease us Bill <laughs> we're glad you're buying house and selling house you got all this smart ass stuff we need more of your stuff right. so what do you, what do you how are you going to do it now because this is new for me too I haven't caught up how you're you actually I've seen things evolving what's what's the latest you're, you're yeah, making so if available you just, if you just go to uh, flippinghouses.club forward slash podcast uh, or podcast you can do it plural or singular either way we have links for both because uh, it was confusing to some people uh, on all the podcasts are there on the left. On the right side are going to be links to a page with all the all the things that we offer. So it's one page with all the courses or the. It's not even courses, Pete. I mean, it's just stuff that you and I do on a basis on a on a daily basis, you know, or or, or Jesse and I, my daughter, mm-hmm. and we've been just recording it, and just people just watch me do stuff. You yeah, know, but th- or, these are the real things, like. I remember when you first started doing some live calls and how you call somebody who's reached out from your marketing to like, you want to buy my house? Right. How you talk to them. Right. And I watched, you know, I learned from it, but the students say, that's your tone of voice. That's how you do it. So right. you're not all stiff like you're the banker. You're like friendly and right. you ask questions and you laugh. And you ask, oh, is that your dog in the back? Ha, ha, ha. Right. You know, they don't know even what approach to take. Right. So that stuff is is crazy valuable. Yeah. And so at this know how point, to start. We're, we're in January 2017 right now. Uh, next month at the meetup, that's exactly what I'm going to talk about. Uh, there's a workshop next month in February 2017. Uh, if you're listening to this podcast after the fact, I'm sorry, but go on the website because yeah. it'll probably be there. Yeah. Okay, uh, and I'm not sure that of that because we haven't done it yet. So, uh, but often if if we do something, I record it, and it's likely it'll show up on a website later on. Unless there's an apocalypse in January. No, sometimes our recordings break, and you know we don't get good footage. Or uh, I'll tell you, I've, I've got I've got events that we've done that you know it takes Emma, my my daughter, days to edit them, and we just don't have time to do that. Yeah. So we have the content, we just haven't <coughs> edited it. You know, and when I mean edit, it's just you know all the bumps with the camera, and, you know, all that kind of stuff. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. Because uh, we're flippers, we're not photographers, we're not camera guys, we're mm-hmm. flippers. Mm-hmm. So we got all this crude equipment that I bought, and we just keep going, right? Yeah. Uh, some of us forget to plug in the cameras. <coughs> some of us forget, and, and, and that's that's Pete will forget to unplug <coughs> the camera. And then my fault is, is I'll forget to bring the goddamn little card to plug into the camera. So we'll have the camera and no card. Mm-hmm. So we both do it. It's not just mm-hmm. you, but it's just Can't, shit that happens. Computers crash. Yeah, things happen. Yeah. Um, and That's anyway, why we bring three, uh, two cameras and a, and a yeah, computer. We, we something try to, is, we try something to solve is always, it. you get one angle of the room. Yeah, we try to solve it. Uh, but anyways, in February, uh, the, the workshop is how to, how to make offers while you're a conversationalist. So, you know, one of the things that I noticed because students have brought it to my attention is that when I make offers, I'm just having a conversation. It's not like, you know, all official. Okay, here's my offer, you know. It's usually like, well, suppose I were to do this, or would mm-hmm. this work for you, or how about if we did this, you know, that kind of stuff. It's a lot like trying to figure out how to go out with your wife on a night, what do you, what do you, where you want to eat. Right. No, I don't like that place. Well, what if we go over there? Well, I don't yeah. have to fish. Well, what if we get this? What if we do that? How about the movie? Well, it's too far away. How about we go to the other theater that's closer? And then the question is, what do you want to do? <laughs> <laughs> After well, she yeah. says no too many times. Yeah, what do you want to do? But then, okay, you want to do that? I'll do that. Then right. you win. Right. And that's how you make your offers, too. Well, right. Or negotiate. You know, well, yeah. well, how about if we do this now and do something later? You do what you want to do, and, and you negotiate. 
Yeah. That's exactly right. Yeah. See, that's that's where I'm still fumbling. I haven't done enough of that. Right. I know I know how the math can work, but like you have to know it could go this way or that way or that way or this way. Right. Many little fine tunings of that. That's what I, I want to focus on more for me, uh, so that I have not just give him my one offer. He goes, no, like, oh, now what do I do? Okay, well, how about if we do this? How so you need a, a couple of leeways. And that's right. what, um, you know, you've been doing more of that for us to see right. how we can lean to the left, lean to the right, get in the middle. What do you, so you work it you, out. you know this word. I, I can never get this word straight in my head. But what is Ex- the thing? Supercalifragilistic, <laughs> uh, I can give I forget. So the thing, the stick that finds water. Oh, divining rod. Divining rod. Divining. Divining rod. So I know the me, word. I'll look it up someday to see. I'll, 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 I'll word clear you on that one. Okay. So divining, why they call it that. We need why next. Okay. Yeah, divine it, that they find the water. Yeah, so a divining rod is something that you kind of like walk along the ground, and when water is below it, it does what it does, right? Yep. To me, that's what the math does. Mm-hmm. It's like a divining rod. It's like it just gets me like in the vicinity. Mm-hmm. Once you know where the water is, now you got to dig it and find it, right? Yeah. Well, that's what I do. Once I know what the math of the deal can do, now I know what to talk about. Yeah. But you have some flex. So you have the flexibility that people don't have. And I've seen it and I'm trying to get. And you might you might be able to say five things back and forth until you find the one that fine tunes it. I might think of two of them. Right. What if I do this? What if I do that? And I'm stuck. And I'm going to attempt, attempt to teach this <laughs> in, in February of 2017. I, I don't know what the date is. Let me look here. Uh, I, oh, you have you, uh, February 18th. Yeah, February 18th, 2017. Yeah. So I don't know if you're listening before or after, but on February 18th, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to go over this because there's some, there's some, first of all, there's five laws to making an offer. So we got to go over that. Mm-hmm. Okay, and that helps. So if you know the five laws to making an offer and you know the math, the rest of it is just is just a couple more pieces, which I haven't taught yet, mm-hmm. that I do that I hadn't realized I do because it's so damn simple in my head, but I haven't, I haven't articulated it at all. Mm-hmm. And so I'm going to go over that stuff. So you can put the pieces, and then, and then you got the basic foundation so you can start making your offers. Yeah. I'm hoping for the light bulb to go off to really click so I just understand it so I can just really comfortably do it instead of you trying to memorize how you should or shouldn't. But right. you know, you get to the point with the subject, you just, oh, I see how how it actually works. Okay, great. I could so right. you gotta keep banging at it till it, it, it dawns in you fully. So the math is important because when you're doing the prospect suspect form, you need to figure out how much equity the person has. And the way you do that is you divide what they owe into what they think the property's worth. So if you have a seventy thousand, if you got a seventy thousand dollar mortgage and the property's worth a hundred, then you got seventy percent loan to value ratio. Now, loan to value ratio could be used as as that technical term like we're using it. So it's the loan to the value of the house, and it's a ratio. It's a seventy yeah. percent ratio, right? Yeah. What's or, the opposite of equity? Or you can say, or you can say they got thirty percent equity. Mm-hmm. But you got to figure out the loan to value ratio so you understand how much equity. Is there a reason you went loan to value instead of equity? Because it, it's the same uh, flip uh, flip uh, coin of either one of those. Is because it's the way the math is. Because loan to value ratio is a mortgage term. Oh, okay. Yeah, so you can look that up in a dictionary. Right, but in so, the what, I'm, what I learned recently or last couple of meetings, you wind up in the end working with the guy's equity. Right. So, so that, that's what I've been uh, what I've been doing to make it really simple is is if you're going to make an offer, so a guy owes seventy thousand dollars in a house. Mm-hmm. If you make him an offer of forty thousand, what's going to happen? Mm. You're going to lose because the guy owes seventy. Right, and that number doesn't change. The equity actually fluctuates because maybe it isn't thirty, maybe it's twenty five, maybe it's thirty five or forty. That nobody right. knows until you actually make. But that number doesn't change. He does owe that. Right. That's that's okay. That's he probably owes a, the 70. that's probably a really good reason to use that. That's he a real owes number. The, 70. the other one's imagining. Now you could do short sales and all that kind of stuff, but th- I'm not in that kind of business. So if he owes seventy, what do you know? He owes seventy. You got to pay the seventy. <laughs> yeah. Right. There's no way around. Well, there are ways around it, but we that's not the purpose. No, you have to be the, desperately horrible, and that we don't want to play with that one. And, but. and I don't want to do that. I, I don't. No. I don't want to make my business that <clears> way. <throat> so so the point is is that he's got thirty thousand dollars, or give or take thirty thousand dollars in equity. Which part of that formula is he, he at total cause at or in total control of? He is that he isn't? That he is. That he is. Which part does he well, have total control over? The equity. So which part can he make a decision about? The equity. So why are you talking about anything else? Yeah. No, you find out what that is. 
and that's where you negotiate. You yeah. negotiate the equity. Yeah, that, so that's why I asked you that question because you talk about loan to value, but at the end it's equity. But still, the the, the mortgage is the mortgage. What he owes is what he well, owes. You have to figure out the loan to value ratio to know how much equity there is, because mm-hmm. the equity is a moving target, like you said. Because suppose the market changes. Suppose suppose well, we just well next week Donald Trump is getting inaugurated, right? Yeah. What happens if it was Hillary Clinton? It'd be different, right? So so as an investor. Maybe with Hillary Clinton, you know, my equity might be eighty thousand. I might only have twenty thousand dollars worth of equity, mm-hmm. or ten thousand dollars worth of equity. Yeah. With with Donald Trump, if he's a real estate guy, he's going to change all the real estate laws. And I'm I'm just talking crap right now. But with the administration changes, maybe maybe it'll be a hundred and ten thousand instead of eighty thousand. Yeah, because those numbers aren't real. It's just what people conceive to be. Equity is what you can get for the property minus what you owe. So if I'm willing to pay you eighty, then your equity on a seventy thousand dollar mortgage is ten ten thousand yeah. dollars. If I'm willing to pay you two hundred, <clears throat> now your equity is two hundred is one hundred thirty thousand. Sure, right. So <coughs> there's no mathematical formula for that. No, that that'll fluctuate. And I was thinking about that when you're talking about the math, because there are some parts of the whole formula that are locked in stone. The loan is the loan, right? But the other stuff is moving, and right. that's where you get your that's where you get your negotiating, right? So, so you want to do the math on the loan to value ratio, so yeah. you know what it is, because yeah. it's not a moving target. Yeah. And then you start negotiating. This is important now. This is the crux of the whole system. You start negotiating. When are you going to pay him that money? Mm-hmm. So if he's got, if you decide you want to pay a hundred, and it's worth, and he owes seventy, okay, there's thirty thousand dollars worth of equity. Mm-hmm. So when am I going to pay you? Mm. If I pay you now, it's a lot less money. Yeah. If I pay, if you let me borrow the money from you and pay you over the course of ten years, I'll pay a whole lot more money for that. Mm-hmm. Now, the you brought this this very important point to the table. If I buy this computer for a thousand dollars today from you, mm-hmm. and I pay you a thousand dollars today, how much should I pay for the computer? Thousand dollars. Okay. Now, if I bought this thou- if I bought this thousand dollar computer from you, and I put it on my credit card and paid for it over two years, mm-hmm. how much am I paying? Could be thirteen, fourteen hundred, fifteen. It's more. It's more, right? So because when- you get you're you're paying for the time for the convenience of waiting, right? And they're they're taking more because you made them you inconvenience them to, to to wait for the money. So if you know that when you're making your offer, so you might say to the guy, well, you know what? Uh, if I pay you today on a hundred thousand dollar piece of property, it's worth a hundred thousand. I can pay you say eighty thousand. I'm mm-hmm. making these numbers up. Mm-hmm. I could pay you today eighty thousand, but if you're willing to wait ten years. I'll pay you 110. Mm. Because first of all, the 110 today is not the same 110 10 years from now because of inflation and all that kind of stuff. Right. More importantly, if you have a mortgage, most people don't realize this, if you take a mortgage and you pay for it over 30 30 years, <laughs> if you pay $100,000 for a house, you're going to probably end up paying 300000 for the by the time you're done paying. Oh yeah. So I do this at the meetup. I say to you, "What did you pay for your house?" So I paid a hundred grand for it. Oh really? How long is your mortgage? I got a thirty-year mortgage. Oh okay. What are your payments? Oh thirteen hundred. Okay, take thirteen hundred and divide it by. I mean, multiply it by three hundred and sixty, which is the amount of payments you're going to make. Mm-hmm. That's how much you paid for the house. You didn't pay a hundred for the house. Yeah, the hundreds on the purchase and sales contract, but it's not what you paid for the house because you paid thirteen hundred or whatever the mortgage is times the amount of months that you had the mortgage. That's right. So it's usually three times. So if I pay a hundred and ten for a hundred thousand dollar piece of property, I feel like I'm way ahead. Yeah, but so I'm not paying three times the amount, yeah, right? But so is he, right? And this is the crazy part, right? So the magic here is is that when I pay extra for the properties, it's always what I. This is magical words. So Peter. If I were to give you one hundred and twenty thousand dollars for your hundred thousand dollar house, would you would you say that's a good deal? Uh, yeah, sure. Would you, would you sell me the house? Yeah. Okay. Here's how it works. I'm going to give you principal only payments. Okay. Bam. Yeah, principal only payments. So oh. basically, what's going to happen is is I'm going to give him an extra twenty or thirty thousand dollars in equity. Mm-hmm. That's really the interest. 
Yeah. And then I'm going to, when we get into the conversation, I'm going to say to him, well, if I were to pay, he say, so you say to me, well, let's do it. Say yeah. you want interest. You say, no, I, well, I'm going to pay your principal only payments. Well, I would want interest because everybody gets interest. How much interest do you think you would want? A 5%. Okay. You realize, Peter, that if I give you 5% interest, two things are going to happen. <clears throat> number one, my number is going to be lower because I have to take into consideration the interest that I'm paying you. Oh. <coughs> number two, if you pay interest, <coughs> that's considered income. Did you know that? Well, if I'm, oh, well, yeah, because, uh, well, yeah, I guess so. So that when, means when I pay interest, I get a credit, but if I receive interest, yeah. So I'm going to claim that interest on my taxes. So that means that you're going to have to show that as income now, right? The five yeah, percent, and I have to pay taxes on that. So we're not really getting five percent, are we? Yeah, we're both losing that way. But if we do what I tell you we're doing. And I give you equity, you know, pay you more equity for your property. So consider that you're considering that's the interest is built into it. <coughs> we just don't right. call it that. <coughs> right. Excuse me. Oh, this damn screen. <laughs> Still got dust on it. Anyways, um, if I pay you, if I pay you an extra 30 grand, you don't get taxed on that, especially if it's a first time home buyer. If it's a, there's no, there's no, there's no tax. Uh, yeah. So you get to keep that money. You don't have to claim it. But if it was an investment property. Yeah, then there's some capital gains tax. Yeah. It's a different conversation. Right. Right. But who cares? Who cares? So you give them more money. Mm -hmm. You just see here. Here's 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 the math to success. More money means more term. So instead of giving you a ten, instead of giving me a ten-year mortgage, so so if I'm going to pay you one hundred twenty thousand dollars for a piece of property and I'm overpaying by twenty grand and I'm asking you for a ten-year term, okay? Mm -hmm. Now you say, well, you know, I, I got to pay capital gains tax. Well, how much do you think I'm going to pay? I got to pay you an extra ten. I'll tell you what, I'll give you an extra twenty. So now you're paying one hundred and forty, hmm. but now I need fifteen years. Hmm. And here's the reason why: <clears throat> because I'm cash flowing on this property. And I know I'm making four, five, six hundred dollars a month. Plus, it's principal only payments, folks. So if I owe you one hundred forty thousand dollars and I make this deal, right? Mm -hmm. And I make a mortgage payment of a thousand dollars to you because my tenant's paying me seventeen or eighteen hundred. Okay. And they're actually paying this bill. They're they're paying the thousand dollars out yeah. of the seventeen or eighteen hundred. Yeah. And I make a payment to you for a thousand dollars a month. Yep. So I owe you one forty, and I make one payment. How much do I owe you? Well, usually with the bank, it's about twenty-five dollars comes off the top. So you, then you would owe one hundred and thirty-nine uh, thousand seventy-five, right? Right. But you said principal only payments. Right. So the whole thousand comes off. Right. The so whole thousand. So how much do I owe you? One hundred thirty-nine thousand. Right. Imagine if you bought. Imagine if you buy a house, and just pay it like your whole mortgage payment just went, and the house was paid. Right. That's what this is, huh? Right. Wow. So if I'm paying you a thousand dollars a month. Mm -hmm. For fifteen years, mm, you just did the math. Didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. First of all, I don't need fifteen years because that means I paid you one hundred eighty thousand dollars because there's one hundred eighty months huh. in fifteen years. So if I pay you a thousand dollars a month, yeah, principal only reduction, twelve thousand a year. Okay. Ten years, that's one hundred twenty thousand. Right. Hmm. You see how it works? Yeah. Now here's the amazing thing: who paid the thousand dollars a month? Yeah. The tenant, the tenant who doesn't have, doesn't own the house. So, in other words, we're selling on a lease option agreement, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. <clears throat> All they get for their thousand dollars a month is usage of the house, right? That's right. They don't get they don't get uh, principal reduction. No, because they don't own the house. Right. So, what I noticed in doing this is life is a kind of a two way street. A conversation goes on between two people. A, a game goes on between two people. And like buying and selling sounds like two people. And you think when the buyer comes and the seller's sitting there that that's the contest. See who can squeeze more out of the other guy. But it isn't that way because there's a third party involved in this. That's the, the, the person who's buying it down the road right. with uh, the lease system who's a guy, a family who can't buy a house right now. They're kind of stuck paying rent. Right. So – if they if they pay rent or a lease for a little while, 
They're no worse off than they were. That's right. But now they have an opportunity to buy the house. To, so to them, it's a benefit. Right. So the third person is helping out of a situation that's bad for them. He's getting help selling the house out of a situation, and you're getting help because you need some money, and I need some money. We all need some money. Right. So I, that dawned to me because you keep. I keep thinking. I'm sure people listening. But wait a minute. The buyer, the seller, the buyer, seller. There's that third person. Right. And you're not screwing him either. <laughs> He's going from a rent to a buy. It takes a little bit, but he needs the time. Right. That's so, crazy. So me. let's just go back to the math. The, wait a minute. Somebody's got to lose in this. No. <laughs> yeah, the government because they don't get the taxes. <laughs> <laughs> so Shh. yeah. So let's go back to the math. So let's say we pay 140, right? Yeah. And we hold the house for five years, which is 60 months, because the guy cashes out. We got a 15 year mortgage, but the guy cashes out in five years. Yeah, because you can't necessarily make it go to whole 15 if the guy cashes out. Right. Okay. So he's got a he's got an option to purchase at 140. We'll say. Yeah. I bought for 140. I sold it to him for 140. Yeah. So you he, break even. No. I, yeah. <laughs> I so let's just say let's just say I'm cash flowing 400 dollars a month. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's just say for mathematical reasons, sure. which is common. Okay. So I'm paying a thousand dollars a month principal reduction. So that means 60 months I paid down the mortgage 60 thousand dollars. That's right. So I sold the house for 140, and now the guy's cashing out. And he's got to give me how much? One hundred and forty. Okay, but how much do I owe? Uh, one hundred and forty minus the sixty thousand you paid is That'd eighty thousand. Okay, so I got. I only have to pay eighty thousand. So when he gives me the one hundred and forty, who gets to keep the sixty? You do, Bill. Okay. And what about the four hundred? You, you and me, Bill. Yeah. How about the forty dollars? <laughs> I mean, how about the four hundred dollars a month I made for sixty months? That's another twenty-four thousand, right? Uh, yeah. So that's 80, forty-eight times. Yeah. That's eighty-four thousand dollars. Mm-hmm. I bought the house for one hundred and forty, sold it for one hundred and forty, made eighty four thousand. You sure didn't break even. The success is in the math. Yeah. And it's because you did principal only payments. Did it matter that I overpaid forty thousand dollars for the property? Now, when you compare it to like uh, taking a conventional mortgage, <laughs> where your payment is, is is nothing. So, how many offers could you get accepted overpaying for property? Make it a beneficial to the seller. And oh yeah, by the way, how many people are going to make offers like you just like I just did? Oh, well, most people can't even can't even conceive of it. So you're the only one in the room. Yeah, this is your own show. This is your own circuits, man. All you got to do is just learn how to do it. And I make I make it sound very simple, and it is very simple. Mm -hmm. But that's the reason for the website. And that's why we keep adding stuff. So uh, if you want more information on this, the best thing to do is go to uh, flippinghouses.club, flippinghouses.club. Uh, there's, I think, 10 or 12 videos that you can watch for free that explain all this math. Just go, go to the owner financing section, and, and I explain this in complete detail. Okay? Yep. <clears throat> if for some reason you want to get more training on this, uh, you can go to flippinghouses.club forward slash podcast. And uh, to the right, uh, this is where all the podcasts are. And to the right on the sidebar, there's going to be a link there uh, that will take you to a page that has all the things that we offer if mm -hmm. you want to do that. Mm -hmm. If you have questions for me directly, you can go to info. <laughs> Here's a new uh, email, folks. Info at flippinghouses.club. <clears throat> info at flippinghouses.club. Is this how we get in touch with you if you can't pick up the phone? Yeah. Or, <laughs> don't expect a quick answer. Or, not as quick as a phone. Oh, or the, uh, the old email. The, I think it's info at flippinghouses.club. Oh, it is dot .club. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's just a regular. So it's info at, info at flippinghouses.club. Mm -hmm. We were using flippinghouses for rookies at gmail.com, but my webmaster said that's, a, that's not a very professional... You, a very professional email, so we have a professional email now, Peter. Oh, info at. Yeah, they but they all go to the same place. They go to mm -hmm. my personal email. So well, I like in, the info. Inf, info at flippinghouses.club, or you can do the old one, which is uh, flippinghousesforrookies at gmail.com. Okay. Okay? And I do the best I can. I mean, I often get about 100 emails or 125 emails a day, so give me a few days. I will respond. I always respond. Uh, and if it gets to be too much, then my assistant will start responding. 
uh, until she can get to me. So, uh, so did I? Did I? Uh, did I succeed in our the math to success? Yeah, no, that's to totally it. That's totally. So we it. took both ends of it. You know, the, like how to save money, like some of the things we do to save money on construction and all that kind of stuff. And then, of course, always making deal structures. Yeah, you know, uh, the money's in the money, not in the real estate. If you understand the contracts, you understand how everything works. You understand, you know, compound interest. You understand. You just put all the pieces together. Uh, the money's there. The mm-hmm. uh, reason why I know that is I travel forty weeks a year and all over the country for five or six years. And the biggest building in every city is the bank. Mm-hmm. That's right. And the reason why is because the money's in the money. Yeah. Real estate is just a way to. F- it's just a reason to write contracts and and use the money. So real estate is just the, the vehicle to get to the real big money. So after a while, when you start doing this, you're going to realize that your money's made in all the contracts and the mortgages and all that kind of stuff that you can write. So if your seller is giving you a mortgage or giving you uh, creative financing, you can now take that creative financing and go use it with your buyer, and that's where the money is. The money's in the money. Totally got it. Okay. All right, Peter. So uh, next two weeks, we have some fantastic, fantastic podcasts, don't we? And I'll find out next week when I show up. No, we we know what they are. (laughs) Uh, I have some of the best, and and they're going to (laughs) be... Well, you don't uh, just always tell me until the show starts. Yeah, well, we're going to follow the the meetups, because the meetups, I'm going to do some... In January, February, I'm going to do some startup stuff, so if you're... yeah. If you're new, uh, if you're new to the business and you want to get going, or if you've been trying to do it for a while and you can't get going, then you need to pay attention to the meetups uh, on February in Mar. I mean, uh, January, February. Yeah, it's the beginning of the year, and we're going to cover some kick-ass stuff from the beginning. I'm going to hold your hand and get you started. Yep. Okay. And if you want to find out about those, just go to Meetup.com, which is where we're at. Meetup.com. Mm-hmm. Uh, and just type in uh, Flipping Houses for Rookies, and you'll find us. Okay, I think the group is well over 400 people, and that's where I send my emails, and that's where I do all my, my magic. And the, the meetings are getting lots of fun. Yeah, the meetings are getting awesome. Okay, Peter, over and out till next week, the big suspense week. <laughs> uh, I promise you I will not let you down the next two podcasts. If you think these podcasts are good, uh, I'm going to put some rocket fuel in them, and we are going to go for a ride. Awesome. Okay. See you next week, Pete. See you, Bill. Thanks for listening. See you next week. We'll see you then. Yay.